Hey everybody, welcome to a very special drive-through review. Now today's not actually gonna be a review, it's gonna be a let's play of The Godfather, Corleone's Empire, coming out from Simon Inc. and designed by Eric Lang. Now this is a very special video because it's a part of a week-long showcase called Tabletop Showcase. Now I'll have a link in the description to the Tabletop Showcase website, but the gist of it is myself and some of my good friends have got together and we have put together a week-long uh, varied kinds of coverage about this game that's coming out. Uh, so I'm doing a Let's Play, a playthrough of it. Just prior to this, yesterday, if you're watching this in real time, you'll have seen a How to Play from Rodney Smith of Watch It Played. And you also have seen, I think two days ago, uh, a theme dissection from Jamie Kiki of Secret Cabal Gaming Podcast. Now upcoming, we've got an interview from Rolling Dice and Taking Names. Chaz Marler is going to have video coverage about it, as well as Matt Evans from Board Game Replay is going to get a bunch of his friends together and a whole variety of folks to get together and play the game and give their kind of post-game assessment of it. Uh, so I'm going to do the playthrough. I'm going to go through all most of the turns. I don't want to spoil the game, the playthrough a little bit, but we're going to go through a good portion of the game. And then also I will kind of teach you how to play as we play. So you don't have to watch Rodney's video, but definitely go watch it if you want the X's and O's and the 100% clear, this is how you need to play. You don't need the rule book anymore kind of thing. But we'll definitely go through all that. And then at the end of the third part of this video, I will also mention a contest, uh, which is gonna be uh, happening. We're gonna be giving away copies of this game. I'll give details in that video about how to win this. And let's just jump right into it. Okay, I've gone ahead and set up the board for two players. There's a couple of things to note about the two player game. One is that you're only gonna have or have one of these allies up. So I went ahead and shuffled up an act one, an act two, and an act three, which you can't see yet. And these are down on the side of the board. Now we can see the first available ally here to be bid on at the end of the round, which we'll get to, is a small time bookie. For each turf you control, add $1 directly to your suitcase. So that's going to be known by all the players before they start playing the game. The next thing to note here is this is gonna be two public job cards available. So these are on display as well. Next you can see I went ahead and put these little black discs on these three plus player spots, just to kind of remind myself as I'm recording the video not to forget and put a family member on one of those circle spots but you can see there's a few of these spots here on the board that are marked as such. Now, next thing to note is we have the control markers here from the yellow player, and the yellow player is the start player. We know this because they have the horse's head token, which can be snagged and grabbed and moved between rounds. We also have here, I've decided that this fella here is gonna be the yellow player's boss, and you can also see three characters here with a square base. Normally, you only use two of them, but in a two-player game, you use three. And then each player starts off with a one, a two, and a three-dollar card. And we also have here two job cards which I've randomized, which we're going to go ahead and take a look at here. So you can see we've got here Shakedown, which is a blue card, and Muscled Out, which is a green card. This one's a little easier to do. You just need one blood money. And this one, you need one of each of the different types of resources here. And I'll talk about you know playing through these job cards uh, once we get to it, but every player is going to start with two of these. Now the first thing you're going to do each turn is do the open a business phase. And you can see a little car marker here uh, marking the different phases of the round. I went ahead and shuffled up four of these. You're always going to have two blue ones and then two red ones. And so we're going to put the first one out. Now in a three, four, five player game, you might start with some of these already on the board uh, but prior to starting the game, but you're always going to draw the top one of the stack here. And you're going to look at the next available empty slot. In this case, we're playing two players. So the number one area, Wall Street, has, has an empty slot. So we're going to go ahead and put that there. And now we have a randomized business in addition to all the ones that are printed on the board. Now we're ready to start. So on your turn, you have basically four options. You can play a family member, and you only start with one of these, and the family members are the folks with a circle base, or you can play a thug, which has the square base. You will acquire more family members as the game goes on, and then you can also play a job card. In this case, we don't have any resources, but we might try to get one of these blood money resources quickly to play this one out. Or you can play an ally, but nobody has an ally. You won't have these to play until the second round and beyond. 
So right now, we're looking at either playing a family member or a thug. Now, right away, this is a very opportune time to go ahead and play a family member here because you get to activate the backs of all the adjacent businesses. So you can see all four of these businesses are adjacent or touching at this particular spot. So you're gonna use all the backsides of these different businesses. On the other hand, I could have gone here and put a thug out and just activated the front of that particular business. Now this is gonna kind of evolve as the rounds proceed and people start to uh, mark control of the different regions and so on. But we're not gonna get ahead of ourselves. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of take the easy move here and activate this. So I get to do a few things here. I get to look at a job card, I get to grab a gun resource, and I get to do two of these suitcase actions. Let's go ahead and do the suitcase action first. So whenever you do a suitcase action, you get to take one of the bills that's in your hand. Now normally these are not face up, these are part of your hand. You can see they all have the same backs as the job cards. Uh, but you get to take one of those for each action and then you have to tell everybody what you're putting in the suitcase. So I'm just going to say I'm going to put a one and a two, I'm going to flip it open, and then I'm going to put this in here and this is now money that is relatively safe. You can get at other players money that's in the suitcase, uh, but this is money that you're going to use to be able to bid on allies, and of course it's gonna to add to your total score at the end of the game. So there's my two suitcase actions. And remember I got a gun resource, so I'm gonna take this again and add it to my hand. And all the cards in this game, again, have the same back. So you sometimes will treat all the cards the same effectively. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and put this in our hand. And then when we take the action to get a new job card, what we're gonna do is draw two cards off the top of the deck and then add one into our hand and discard it. These public jobs are available for anybody to do. They're kind of in a public hand. So if anybody had a booze resource here, then they could effectively complete the job and take that, resolve that, which I'll explain in a minute. But these you don't draw from, you draw two cards off the top and let's just take a peek. Oh, that was simple. <laughs> They're both the same. So I'm just gonna keep one and then I'm gonna discard the other one over here. So a very simple turn. I banked two of my money cards. I got a new job card and then a gun resource here. You might've said, why didn't I go for the blood money? Well, that spot's really juicy to go after and do all of that activity very early on. And I got a gun which can help me as I start to build towards doing these two shakedown job cards here. Now the red player is gonna go. They're not gonna use their family member because like I said, you only start with one of these. So you're pretty safe in assuming that you have all of the other circle spots available to you. So we're gonna go ahead and do this one with our thug. And then we're gonna go ahead and steal back the start player marker. And then we're gonna get a dollar card. So now the red player will have first dibs at the start of the second round with whatever place they wanna to go to. Now the yellow player is gonna go here to the Genco business and they're gonna go right here. And what this means here is that you can discard any card. Again, sometimes you can treat all the cards the same and then you can get one of these resources. So if you remember, we had this extra shakedown card. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that since it's extra. It's gonna be hard to kind of complete two of these, even though it's definitely feasible once you get later in the game. Gonna discard that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab, let's just say a blood money. So I take the blood money and then I'll add it to my hand. And then we'll have the red player just go here, give themselves another couple of job cards to look at. And they got two job cards here. And you can see this one costs you two booze. It says show up to three money cards from your hand and then suitcase them. Well, right now we've got a lot of money and these jobs all give you some money. So this might be a good one to keep. Now we don't have any resources, so we're not really dictating what's gonna happen here. Uh, and this one only costs a gun and allows you to gun down one enemy thug, which could come into play when you're determining uh, control at the end of the round. All of your figures are gonna, are gonna exert control on the round. This one's definitely easier to do. Uh, let's just for fun though, let's go ahead and do this one here because we already have a car bomb card, which just allows us to uh, do a couple of different things there. It's a little bit more expensive, but let's go with the yellow. Because you'll also want to remember that you're trying to get a majority in these different colors and it's probably a little bit of a good idea to be flexible at the beginning of the game. Now yellow is going to go here. They're going to grab a booze resource and they now have one of each of the different types of resources and that was going to give them enough to complete the shakedown card probably on their next turn. And since red is kind of falling behind the wayside on the resource game, they're gonna go here and just grab themselves a little bit of blood money. Now moving back to yellow, they're down to their last figure. And when you place your last figure, then you're done. You can't do any other actions. So even if you had a job card, like this one that we can play, or perhaps you had an ally that you wanted to play, once you've played all your figures, then you're sort of out of the running there and you can't play any cards. So we're gonna hold off on playing this last 
figure, even though maybe we miss out on a spot that we really need to get to. That's part of the stuff you got to plan. We're going to go ahead and then activate this job card for our turn. We're going to go ahead and play one of each of the different resources, as you can see, is the requirements here. And then you've got this uh, action that's going to happen, shake down the front of any business, even if it has a thug, and you're also going to get a $5 card. Now you can do either the money or the action first or last or whatever order you want to do. So it doesn't really matter. In this case, we'll take the five bucks and then we'll shake down the front of a business. Now, when you complete the job, you're going to take the job and add it to your suitcase. Because remember, again, you're trying to get the most of whatever color. So, you know, we're already in, so to speak, to try to get all the blues. So we'll go ahead and pack that away. We'll take our five. We'll go ahead and throw this here to our hand. And then we're going to shake down the front of a business just as if we had played a thug. Well, in this case, we're going to shake down this business. That's going to give us the blood money. The reason we're going to do that is because we have this card here, which uses blood money, which gives us another job we can do on our next turn, probably. Now, the red player, all they have here is their dawn left. They don't really have any resources. They just have the one blood money. So there's not really any jobs they can do. So maybe they made a little bit of a mistake there. However, they did get first player. They got some extra money, which you're going to see isn't really that great in the, as we resolve the end of the round. But we're going to go ahead and place her out onto the board. And we're going to go ahead and put her here at Central Park in this area. Now, Central Park is an interesting spot. It's only activated by family members, as if it was the back of a business. So she's going to be able to do two suitcase actions, one for Central Park, one for the accounting office here in Chelsea. And she's also going to get a gun resource. So we'll go ahead and add the gun to our hand, and then we now are allowed to bank uh, two of our money cards. Now you might say, hey, why don't you bank the two and the three? I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna bank here the two ones, and you will see why momentarily. So we're gonna go ahead and put these two cards into her briefcase there, so away they go. And then that was her turn. She's done, she's placed all her figures. Even if she could complete a job card, uh, at this point with these extra resources, which she can't anyway, uh, she can't do anything. So now we're back to the yellow player's turn. They've got a couple of options here. They've still got one thug left that they could place out. But again, they also have this muscled out card here. And they've got one blood money that they could spend to do that. Now, the reason that this is very important actually, at least for this round, is you can see the effect of this. Move any figure to a new space, they don't get the ability. Because what we're gonna do now at the end of the round is figure out control of these different regions here. So right now, we've got region one here, Wall Street. Yellow has two influence. They've got a thug in the region, and then a their dawn adjacent to it, so they've got two influence. Red's only got one, so they're good. We know that red's out of figures. We go here to two, red's the only one with influence there. And then up here at the top, red is putting influence here in six and seven. You can see that there because they're adjacent to those two spots. Nobody's up here in four, there's no figures there. And then way up at the top here in three and five respectively, uh, red's got one influence, yellow's got another influence. So yellow can have a little bit of fun. They're gonna go ahead and activate this job card. They're gonna spend that resource and they're gonna, again, get the $3 and put this in the suitcase. And then they have a very tricky decision on who to move and where to move that person. Just a couple of things we could do. Let's say they didn't really want, um, oh, actually, you know, I think I made a mistake here earlier because I forgot that yellow was giving influence to both of these here. I, I totally uh, misread that. So I, let's just re-clarify that. Red's getting one influence and then yellow's getting one influence. So that's a tie. Nobody's going to gain control over that. So I think that makes this decision... Yeah, a little bit easier here. So we're gonna move this lady down here. So now red's got two influence here, as well as two influence down here. So this is the tie, this is gonna stay locked in. Red was already getting that though. Uh, but now yellow's putting their influence as you can see out there. So that's happened, they've moved that. And then now we're going to the next turn here and we could throw down, uh, we could throw yellow up here just to get influence. You know, maybe we don't really need to do this action. Now you can go to a spot and not actually do the action. So I think I may do that. I could go down here though in places that I've already locked in, but let's just for fun go up here. Yeah, and I think there's not really a reason not to do this. Uh, there, there could be a reason not to do this action, but I think it makes sense for yellow to actually do the action and not just go here and block it. So this means discard any two cards uh, and you get a five. Well, in my hand right now, I've got two threes and a five. So yeah, you're throwing away $6 to get five? 
Mm, it's it's a little dicey, but let's just kind of do it to be fun. I would actually probably AP over this slightly, maybe for about 10 seconds, but for fun, I'm gonna chuck those away. Yes, I know I'm getting rid of less money, but hand management and hand limit uh, is very, very uh, egregious in this game in a lot of ways. So let's go ahead and just do that. So now we've done the second phase. We've done all the action step. We're gonna go here and then figure out control of the different regions. Again, region one is tied. We each have two influence, so no marker will be put out. Region two is definitely in control of red, so red now owns that. So what does that mean? Well, if you remember back to your tutorial video by Rodney Smith, this will give you bonus points at the end of the game if you have the most tokens in a region, but it'll also allow you to sort of siphon off actions. So if yellow were to come here and do a thug action, then red could take that action as well on yellow's turn because they effectively kind of own that area there. Now red also owns region three, the Upper East Side. Yellow owns Queens, or controls Queens, they don't own it. And yellow also controls the Upper West Side. And as we worked out before, yellow owns areas six and seven, Midtown and Chelsea. So there we've resolved control of the area. So once we do that, then we can bid on the ally, which I showed you at setup. And after that, then we're gonna discard down to hand size. So let's look at the bidding a little bit. So again, the ally that's face up that you're gonna be able to use from now on throughout the rest of the game, if you win it, is the small time bookie. For each turf you control, which we just established and yellow's doing a little bit better than red on, you can play this card for one of your actions instead of a job or putting a worker out and you get a dollar directly into your suitcase. Now the way that you do that is you're gonna take your briefcase, look at any money that's inside of it. Now yellow just has three bucks and one and a two and let's say yellow wanted a bit of buck on it. You'll take any money that you want, it could be multiple cards, it could be nothing and you'll just kind of do it and all the players will let that flop open and then that will effectively be your bid. If you win, then you spend the money and get the card uh, if you don't win, then you keep the money. Now in a multiplayer game, you bid and there'll be more of these out here on the board and whoever bids the most basically just gets first choice and then on down the line. So you gotta be careful because you might not get something that you thought was really useful and so on. So for purposes of this demonstration, a blind bid's a little hard to demonstrate, uh, but I'm just gonna say yellow won it because they had three bucks. Yellow just had two ones, so they bid nothing. So red's gonna spend that, this is gonna go away. And then this is now going to come into red's hand and it's going to count against their hand limit immediately. So we can see here Don Corleone, he's about to leave act one and go into act two. You got that little symbol there, that's the five card hand limit. So you're gonna take a look at your hand. And in this case, yellow is doing exceedingly well because they have two fives in the ally. So they're good, they can keep all their cards. Well, let's take a look at the cards they have. Now they have a total of seven cards. They gotta get rid of two cards. They got two resources. And not a good idea early in the game, especially to get rid of resources or ever. They got three job cards, maybe a couple too many. Let's take a look at the job cards here. This one costs three guns. Eh, right away, let's get rid of that. Even though we have a gun. Now they need to get rid of one other card. They got this backroom deal and then muscle in. Now muscle in is a really good card, which I'll show you when it gets used. So let's go ahead and just get rid of the two. I'm kind of going back and forth. Let's get rid of the two because we may get access to some booze. We are going first. So we're going to throw away this $2. We're basically throwing away two points. Now the rest of the cleanup is going to be to consume and remove all of these workers back into your personal display. If anybody was dead here, you put them in the Hudson River when they get shot. They also will come back to you. They're not dead permanently. So Red will get their folks back. If any of the public jobs have been completed, let's say somebody completed this one, then you will replenish it. You don't replenish it as they get completed and you don't wipe any out. If nobody completed any, those are gonna stay there. 